Sign up for the Agronac Studios newsletter at agronac.com. Happy October! Every year, as soon as November 1st hits, I am looking forward to the next October 1st. I love the October. I love pumpkin spice. I love Halloween. I love jack-o'-lanterns, pumpkins, and orange is my favorite color. This is a 2022 Peterson Halloween edition. Did I mention I love October? So this month at Agronac Studios, we're going to be exploring some Halloween-themed D&D stuff, or TTRPGs. Today, we're going to be taking a look at cursed magic items with that Halloween flavor. Before we get into specific cursed items that I've got planned for you guys, let's take a look at a few things that you should do as good practices for cursed items with a Halloween theme. Oh, and a word of caution, I wouldn't use cursed items all that often, otherwise they're going to lose their impact. Or at worst, your players will never pick up a magic item again. Then again, do whatever you want. So the three things to know up front when creating your own cursed items. Number one, let the curse grow on the afflicted. Number two, make it the MacGuffin so they have to face it. Number three, treat a cursed item like it's an NPC. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss an upload. And join the conversation over at the Agronac Cult Discord. All right, number one, let the curse grow on the afflicted. Make it so the curse is not apparent right up front. Give it a good one, two, maybe even three uses. That is before something bad happens or the potential of something bad happening. Give it at least two good uses before you give it a percentage chance of something bad happening. Otherwise, it's not any better than a trap being sprung on the party like the dungeon floor opening up and all the characters are impaled on spikes. Give it some mystery. Though it can be funny, it's typically not funny for the character or the player affected. Number two, make it the MacGuffin. For those that don't know, a MacGuffin is an object, device, or event that is necessary for the plot and the motivation of the characters. Then again, obviously making it a random magic item found can be fun as well. So there's no hard, fast rules here. So having the players actually wanting to get this thing and then them having to deal with it can be a lot of fun. And pretty fun to witness as a dungeon master. So basically, if they can't shy away from it, they are confronted by it and will have to spend some time with it. And you can really build this up by explaining the lore and, uh, well, the curse itself. Or keep it secret for some added intrigue. Number three, treat your cursed magic item as an NPC. Have it speak audibly or telepathically or through dreams and codes or in ghostly writings on the dust of an old window. The cursed item could even be haunted by a spirit, ancient or otherwise. You can make it so that the cursed item has a personality that is alluring and draws in the character that might be affected, or the whole party, making it even nigh impossible to resist, a la the One Ring from Lord of the Rings. Though obviously you want player agency, so be careful. Use impossible to resist with caution. As an option, you can make it a role that they're resisting with their charisma, or wisdom. Or the better route, which is just nagging your players little by little until curiosity gets the cat. And then they can't help but to attempt to use the magic item, cursed as it may be. All that being said, here are five cursed magic items for your Halloween-themed D&D session. The Visage of Pumpkin Jack. This is a grotesque pumpkin mask with a wide, crooked smile carved into its surface. Wearing it grants the user advantage on intimidation checks and the ability to cast Cause Fear as per the spell once per day. Now for the curse. It's always good to front load your cursed magic items with something useful to throw your players off. The curse is that the mask feeds off the fear that it creates at the request of the character. Each time the wearer successfully causes fear on a creature, the mask tightens around their face just a bit more, becoming harder and harder to remove. After three successful uses, the mask becomes permanently fused to their face. Once it's on their face for good, they'll have to make a DC 17 wisdom check 
every day at dawn. If they fail, they will be compelled to cast that cause fear spell on the nearest people, or maybe a nearby village, or however you want to work it out. The Mirror of Malevolent Reflection a handheld mirror framed in twisted black iron. When used, it shows the user's reflection in that mirror, but with subtle, sinister differences. Go ahead, let your description get the better of you. <laughs> it grants the ability to cast disguise self once per day. The curse. Over time, the reflection takes on a personality of its own, becoming more sinister, more malicious, and independent. After three uses, the reflection may step out of the mirror during moments of weakness, like while the user is unconscious or asleep, acting upon its own desires. The doppelganger seeks to replace the user, or at the very least, cause havoc in their name. The Doll of Twisted Fate. A small humanoid doll made of straw and rough cloth. It has crude stitching and mismatched button eyes. The user can link it to another creature by taking some of that creature's blood and smearing it on the feet of the doll, allowing them to cast Hex or bestow Curse on that target. The doll forms a two-way connection between the target and the user. For each curse that the user inflicts on the target, well, the user takes that curse as well, experiencing the same pain and suffering that the target is experiencing. If the target dies from the curse, the user must succeed on a DC-17 constitution save or die themselves. I <laughs> know, pretty messed up, huh? The Ebony Mauser. This is a small ebony statue of a black cat with amber eyes. When activated, the little idol turns into a shadow cat familiar, similar to a regular cat, but it has dark vision and stealth abilities. The cat will serve the user for 24 hours, then return back to its idle form. The curse. The cat gradually becomes more independent and malicious. Each time the user summons the cat, there's a 10% chance that the cat will turn on the user, sabotaging their plans by spying for the enemies or leading them straight into traps. The Hairpin of Invisibility. A long, twisted iron pin with strands of tangled, silvery hag hair wrapped around it. When the user activates it and pierces their own skin drawing blood, they will turn invisible as per the spell, Invisibility. The Curse. Each time the user activates the pin, they will be haunted with nightmares the same night. Haunted by visions of a coven of hags. After three uses, the hags materialize in the prime material plane as spirits to torment the user. They stalk the user, attempting to drive them mad. If the wielder uses the magic item for a fourth time, they must succeed on a charisma save DC 17 and each time after. If they fail, they will be afflicted with a long-term madness. What other cursed items with a Halloween theme can you think of? Leave your ideas in the comments. Thanks for stopping by Agronax Studios today, and we'll see you on the next one. Later. This video was brought to you by the generous support of our patrons. Consider becoming a patron so you can help us make more content like this. Or get yourself a t-shirt below. Later. Ma! Alright, do this and do that and do this and do that and watch this video.